This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, I said in the uh, previous lecture that um, in the exam, when you've got uh, net present value questions, the real problem isn't the discounting. That should be automatic and you're given tables. But it's actually interpreting the question and setting up the cash flows. Uh, and the way the examiner makes it, um, I hate to use the word hard, but certainly more involved, there are three areas you need to be able to deal with, which are working capital, uh, tax, and inflation. Uh, and most questions in section C uh, on net present value um, will have all three of those problems uh, in them, tax, inflation, uh, working capital. Well, what I'm going to do is go through one by one. We'll look at working capital in this lecture, which uh, I hope you'll agree is a pretty straightforward one. Then we'll look at uh, tax and we'll look at inflation. And we'll put them all together. So anyway, for this lecture, simply what we mean and how we deal with working capital. Uh, and to explain, let's go straight to uh, the example. Example two, first of all. A uh, machine costs 100,000 to purchase. In addition, a further 20,000 working capital will be required at the start of the project. It's going to last four years and have a scrap value of 20,000 at the end of its useful life. And the net operating cash flows, 30,000 a year for the first two years, 40,000 a year for the following two. All right, well, let's start the way we intend to go on. When you, We need to get the cash flows for each of the years. And although you can set up the cash flows in different ways, the standard way, the best way, because it's the way the examiner himself uses, is to have a column for each year. Uh, here, um, we'll buy the machine at time zero. It's going to last four years. So one, two, three, four. We'll have a column for each of the years. And now let's write down each of the flows in turn that we've given in the question. Uh, and then at the end, we can just get the net flow. Now, first of all, for reasons you'll see in the next lecture, it's always good to start with what we call the operating cash flow. Uh, and what I mean by the operating cash flow, um, it's the profit, but in cash terms. Remember, it's a cash-based exercise. So it's the cash receipts, the cash income, less the cash expenses. Well, the net cash flow each year, it's 30,000 a year for the first two years. It's 40,000 a year for the next two. Now, that was nice and easy. You'll see in... Um, and bring in the other areas that that itself can take some time to arrive at, but not here. Uh, what about the capital flows? By the capital flows, I mean the original cost. No problem. First line, it costs 100,000 to purchase, so an outflow of 100,000 at time zero. Um, and when I say capital flows, I mean the cost and any scrap money. Well, it tells us in the second uh, sentence, there are scrap proceeds, 20,000 at the end of its life, so an inflow of 20,000 in four years' time. However, now we come to the one I need to explain, the working capital. It says in the first line that it cost 100,000 to purchase, and in addition, a further 20,000 working capital will be needed at the start. Well, what we're talking about here it's okay, we've bought the machine, but for whatever it is we're producing, we're going to need to have working capital. We're going to need to buy materials. We're going to have it, need to have inventory. We're going to have to accept a level of um, receivables. We're going to need cash to finance, you know, until we get the money from our receivables. And so that's what we're talking about. So uh, in, a, in order to buy our materials and whatever, at time zero, in addition 
to the money for the machine, we also need, how much was it? 20,000 for the working capital. Easy. Now, one thing though about this working capital, we assume, subject to one thing I'll mention later, uh, we assume that this is for things like uh, buying extra materials for whatever we're producing, that we'll need that 20,000 throughout the life of the project, but at the end of the project, well, we'll no longer need that working capital. And so, effectively, we'll get it back. We pay 20,000 out now, at the end of its life, an inflow, that 20,000 comes back. And there we are. And so what's the net cash flow each year? An outflow of 120,000 at time zero, inflows of 30, 30, 40, and at time four, a total inflow of 80,000. Now, I'm not going to discount here. We check the discounting and, you know, when I brought in the other problems in the later lectures, then we'll have a full one and we will discount. Uh, but we know how to discount. I'm not going to waste time here. And so, nice and easy, working capital. We need the outflow at the start. And at the end of the project, we assume we get it back. <coughs> I say nice and easy. In fact, usually it is. But there's one little, what you might call, trick that the examiner has done a few times recently, which isn't hard, but needs slightly more thought. Look at example three. Example three, a machine costs 15,000. It's expected to last for four years with a scrap value of 2,000 at the end of four years. The sales revenue and the operating costs for each of the four years have been estimated as follows. So there we are, they're all listed. And working capital. Working capital of 10% of the year's revenue is required at the start of each year. All right, now, work through this one with me. It's not hard, but it's the working capital, which so many people, when it's phrased like this, get wrong. All right, let's set it up as before. A few columns. Time zero is now. Time one, time two, time three, time four. Uh, the operating flows. Well, we've got the revenue. 5,000, 11,000, 8,000, 9,000. We've got the operating costs. So outflows of two, two, two and two. And so there's a net operating flow each year of three, nine, six and seven. Uh, now I appreciate I could have done those in my head and written them straight down. Now don't in the exam. You know, it's a section C question, there'll be a lot more involved. Appreciating this lecture, I'm only really worried about the working capital. But there are marks for each line that you write down. Don't do things in your head and risk uh, having made a silly mistake. Anyway, there's the net operating flow each year. The capital flows, well, the cost of the machine at time zero is 15,000, an outflow. And at the end of four years, we've got the scrap value. We receive 2,000. Finally, though, the working capital. Now, this is the bit I say it's not hard, but be careful and make sure you, you understand it. It says working capital of 10% of the year's revenue is required at the start of each year. Well, the first year starts now, time zero. And the revenue in the first year is 5,000. And so 10%, we need 10% of 5,000. 
we need 500 at the start of the year, which is now. So that's easy. It's required at the start of each year. So the second year starts in one year's time. And how much working capital do we require at the start of the second year? 10% of the second year's revenue. Revenue is 11,000. 10% is 1100. However, we've already got 500. We've already got 500 working capital. We've already got 500 inventory. We want the working capital to be 1100. So we're not going to put in another 1100, but 1600. We need to put the extra in to make it 1100. At the start of the second year, Remember, that second year starts in one year's time. We need 10% of 11,000. But we've already got 500. And so we need an extra 600. So we've already got 500 there. In a year's time, put another 600 there. We've now got a total of 1,100 which is 10% of the second year's revenue. Uh, what about the third year? Well, the, start, the third year starts in two years' time. And how much do we need? We need 10% of the revenue of 8,000. So we need the working capital to be 800. But how much is it at the moment? At the moment, the working capital's 1,100. So we've got more than we need. So instead of putting more money into working capital, we can get some of it back. At the moment, we've got 1,100. We only need 800. We get 300 back, an inflow of 300. What about time three? Remember, three years' time is the start of the fourth year. And in the fourth year, the revenue is 9,000. So we need it to be 10% of 9,000. We need working capital of 900. How much have we got at the moment? We had five, it went up to 11. We got back three, so at the moment we've got 800. We need it to be 900. We need an extra 100. Now, I do hope you're clear what I'm doing there. We're not finished yet, but I do hope you're clear what's happening. That at the start of each year, we need the total of all the working capital to be 10% of that year's revenue. And so on each year, until, of course, the end. Uh, I said earlier, at the end of the project, we assume that we get back all the working capital. So how much working capital is there? I know we just had it, but it was 1,100. Well, sorry, that was an outflight. Do apologise. It was 1,100. We got back 300, gave us 800. We put another 100 in, which gave us 900. So there's 900 there. At the end of the project, we assume that we get that 900 back. And therefore, again, what are the net cash flows? An outflow of 15,500 at time zero, an inflow of 2,400 at time one, 9,300 at time two, uh, 5,900 at time three, and 9,900 at time four. Is that right? Yes, it is. Great. Okay, just one tiny thing to mention, although don't worry particularly for the exam. Um, I said in both examples, look back at the first one, I said that at the end of the project, we assume we no longer need the working capital and we get it back. However, there have been one or two examples 
uh, in the exam recently where the examiners told you that we'll be carrying on producing this product, that okay, this machine might be scrapped after four years, but we'll be buying another machine. Uh, we are going to carry on producing the product. And if we are going to carry on producing it, we'll still need the working capital. And if the working capital is still needed, we don't get it back. Now, that's fine, although the examiner has been a bit indistinct, and so, in fact, he's made it clear that even if he's not brought the working capital back in his answer, because we've assumed we're still making the product, that if you have brought it back, as we normally do, he has said you'd still get the full marks. So, there we are. Check that you are happy with both of those, particularly example three. Um, but as I already said in the next lecture, we'll add on the second problem, which is tax, which is a lot more fun. And then the next problem is still inflation.